The Arecibo Observatory, located in Puerto Rico, has been the key to a myriad of priceless discoveries when it comes to understanding our cosmos. Unfortunately, in 2020, the observatory, which had been running since 1963, was tragically destroyed due to the building's support structure collapsing. But in its prime, the Arecibo served to locate a plenitude of extraordinary things. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be talking about three Arecibo discoveries. Arecibo Fast Radio Burst FRB 12110220012 Fast radio bursts, or as they are commonly known, FRBs, are radio flashes that last mere milliseconds at a time. Their origins are often unknown, and astronomers seek to find their sources using radio surveys across the skies. FRB 121102 was caught by the Arecibo Observatory back in late 2012 which relieved doubts of the observatory being a victim of terrestrial signal obstruction. Initially, the origins of the FRB were unknown, but its intensity exceeded expectations. Unfortunately, the subject of FRB 121102 was dropped until 2015. In 2015, Paul Schultz, an astronomer from the McGill University of Canada, found a shocking revelation. Two and a half years after the initial FRB 121102 burst, Ten more seemingly abrupt FRBs were found positioned nearby and had been witnessed with the exact same level of pulse dispersion. This caused researchers to believe that FRB 121102 was a recurring burst. The ten FRBs occurred from May to June of 2015, each time captured by the Arecibo telescope. In accordance with the original 2012 burst, the ten FRBs all appeared to possess a plasma dispersion that was three times larger than would be theoretically possible to happen in our galaxy, as the Milky Way cannot sustain such massive radio ray explosions. The team working on the project believed this ruled out the possibility of it having been a singular cosmic event, such as a neutron star collision in a far-off galaxy, and must be something routine in space. Some theories include the source being a young pulsar orbiting a magnetar, which is a neutron star that is magnetized, or magnetars traversing asteroid belts. Another theory suggested the source is a white dwarf star. Excitingly for the astronomers, six new FRBs were received from late 2015 to early 2016, all stemming from the same direction in the sky. This elusive discovery is one of only two where signals have been located to come from the exact same points in the cosmos, making it an evasive, frustrating and yet compelling mystery for the scientists. FRB 121102 is considered to be extragalactic, meaning it is outside of our Milky Way and lies an estimated 1,150 astronomical units from Earth. If researchers are correct, FRB 121102 is located in a tiny galaxy 3 billion light-years away from us. This galaxy is believed to have a pulsar at its center that is interconnected with the remainder of a past supernova. Most theories suggest, however, that the origin comes from a dense stellar core near a strong field of magnetic energy, such as close to a nebula or a colossal black hole. And, in the spring of 2018, FRB 121102 sent out 21 bursts within a single hour, and another 72 bursts later that year within the span of a day. Finally, scientists were able to piece together an unexpected rhythm. Every 157 days, the source of the FRB would give out intense bursts of radio energy for about 90-day periods, then entirely stop until the cycle repeated. This furthered the theory of it being an orbiting neutron star or black hole, as an orbital movement is the most likely contender for the pattern. Currently, the pattern is still being studied, and scientists hope to get to the bottom of FRB 121102 sometime in the future. Arecibo PSR B125712 PSR B125712, alternatively known as PSR J1300140, is a pulsar 2,300 light-years away from our Sun found in the constellation of Virgo. The pulsar rotates an estimated 161 times each second. 
The pulsar system is referred to by some scientists as the Lich, named after the fictional fantasy creature that rules the undead. The Lich contains three planets, Draugr, Poltergeist, and Phobotor. These planets were discovered between 1992 and 1994. Poltergeist is the lowest mass planet scientists have ever uncovered. More than that, Poltergeist has less mass than the Earth's moon. All three are the very first pulsar planets to have been found in the cosmos. The planets were named in 2014 by the Name ExoWorlds project started by the International Astronomical Union who allowed the public to vote and nominate names for exoplanets and host stars. Alexander Volskan, a Polish astronomer, found the pulsar on the 9th of February in 1990 with the use of the Arecibo Observatory. PSR B125712 is a neutron star that rotates at a pace of 9,650 rpm. However, the pulsar has strange, irregular pulses. Alexander Voltsken and Dale Frail worked together to publish a paper in 1992 which confirmed the existence of planets outside of our solar system. The estimated mass of the Lich pulsar itself is believed to be 1.4 solar masses which is typical for the majority of neutron stars. The radius of the pulsar is 10 kilometers and has a temperature of 28,856 degrees Kelvin. Researchers found that the pulsar was created somewhere between 1 to 3 billion years ago from two white dwarfs colliding into each other, which then formed the spinning neutron star. The uncovering of PSR B125712 was remarkable because of how rare in space such a phenomenon is. Planets do not tend to orbit around pulsars, making this discovery highly unusual. Only four other pulsar planets that we know of exist. What makes the case even more awe-inducing is the fact that before these were found, there had yet to be a confirmation of extrasolar planets. It's these very pulsar planets that confirmed the existence of planets outside of our solar system, and how incredible it is that our first proper discovery was something so fantastically mysterious and rare. Other theories on how the pulsar system formed include it originating from a supernova or quark nova, but these are more obscure and generally disbelieved in most scientific circles due to the popularity of the dual white dwarf collision theory. Arecibo Ice on Mercury As the closest planet to the Sun, one would not think that ice could possibly form on the superheated planet, but, as it turns out, it just might be possible. On average, Mercury can reach temperatures of up to 700 degrees Kelvin, and it takes 176 Earth days for a single day to pass on Mercury since the planet rotates incredibly slowly and spends most of its time roasting under the Sun's radioactive heat. Somehow, despite this fact, radar images have shown that ice could exist on Mercury's poles. An Earth-based radar has revealed there is reflectivity near the south and northern poles of Mercury's surface, and furthermore, there are various other circular-shaped places that suggest ice. It is assumed that the ice, if it is there, lies in the shadowy craters of Mercury, where it might just be cold enough for water to freeze, sufficiently hidden from the extreme heat of Mercury's surface. With the discovery of the Earth's moon having ice, Believers in the Mercury Ice Theory use this as an example of how it could be possible. The Arecibo Radio Telescope was utilized during investigations concerning the Ice on Mercury hypothesis alongside the Very Large Array Telescope. Polarized radio and radar waves were sent towards Mercury to analyze it. The waves proceeded to reflect from Mercury and promptly returned to Earth, transferred and obtained by the Arecibo Observatory. The results revealed that, indeed, there appears to be ice and even ice water on Mercury deep within the craters, however much of it appears to also be covered by a prospective layer of soil, dust or dirt. This is still only an unconfirmed theory as it could be many other things. If it is ice, then the cracks of the South and North Poles are the only places that ice can form on a planet as hot as Mercury, which lacks an atmosphere and is therefore exposed to the vastness of space meaning that if not kept solid, the ice would melt and float into space due to the very low gravity. Of course, we do not fully know if craters deep enough to sustain ice even exist on Mercury yet. Our best images of the planet come from 1975. Should ice be on Mercury as is believed, 
then it likely came from meteorites as there is no conceivable way the planet would have obtained water through non-galactic means. But it is all still a working thesis. As it is exceedingly challenging for scientists to research Mercury due to both the distance between the planet to us and its close proximity to the Sun, which makes sending research spacecraft a severe struggle without having spacecraft be destroyed by the immense heat. Radar observations are our best bet for studying the far-off planet, as even when sending space probes, they run the risk of falling into the Sun's gravity. Mariner 10 was the only mission probe to visit Mercury, having flybys in the 1970s, but the only images we gathered were of the planet covered by the light of the Sun, making half the images difficult to decipher the details from. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.